Hello, everybody. Jump on in, please. This is going to be fun today. Sunday fun day. Come on in. We're about to do block three. Weather vane. Cooped up quilt. What you're going to need Ooh, there we go. Eight two and a half inch squares of a green color, four three inch squares of a green color, eight two and a half inch squares of a yellow, four three inch squares of the yellow, four two and a half inch squares of a blue background, and eight three inch squares of the blue, ba blue background. Oops, I'm still getting a little... I'm, I'm trying not to make you nervous or dizzy. Hello, I see two eyeballs. Who's watching me? Say hi. Okay. You're going to take your three-inch squares. And... Oops, here we go. Your three-inch squares of your blue background, your yellow, and your green. And you are going to draw a a, one on one side, the wrong side of the fabric. Sue the wrong side. And then you are going to put them face to face and stitch a quarter inch from each side of that line. Or in my case, I do, I make a, uh, valley with the iron and follow that um, but you will do a quarter inch on each side of that and then you cut them in your valley or in your on your line okay hello Melissa hello Angela's quilting studio I don't know why I said hi to myself but woohoo here we go I see a couple more eyes, people. Say hi. When you get all of your half square triangles done, you're going to take them and you're going to make blocks like this so that you have a total of four of these blocks and blocks like this so that you have a total of four of these blocks. Hi, Eva! And then your center block, okay, is your four remaining four and a half, <laughs> four remaining two and a half inch squares. Okay, so I have put this partially together because I want to show... I want to show so. Hi, Jean, how are you doing? This is what my corner blocks look like. I'll come back a little bit further, I guess. Again, this is pure scraps on my part. Whatever I'm finding when I open up the bins. And this is a really wonky, thank you very much, um, of the other one. Hello, Don McDonald. How are you? Haven't seen you in a while. Hope everybody's healthy. Um, this is, like I said, this is a little wonky, but it'll work. Um, but you need four of these. So you'll have one row that looks like this. I love hiding my face. And you, actually, you're going to have two rows that look like this. And you're going to have one row that looks like this. So in the end, we will be putting 
these together. Ooh, I'm trying to figure out. Together, like so. So we'll match up all of our seams. Now, before I go any further with it, I also have a second block cut out to start here. A little bit different colors. Um, this block, even though it's called the weather vane, reminds me of a sunflower. Um, when they first open up and they have all the little green things in the center that will eventually become the brown seeds and then the green leaves that stick out from it. Um, that's what this block reminds me of. So then I decided I was going to do one that is the sunflower finished. And I'm putting this in the center, one four and a half inch square, as the sunflower seeds. So just, again, I cannot follow a pattern that someone's teaching me. People hate when I take their classes because I never follow it exactly as they have it. But this is why I do what I do. Um, this is my green leaves, so more towards the fall, late summer. And this is my sky and this is my sunflowers okay so with that in mind i'll post this picture as soon as i have it done also but does anybody have any questions from what i showed them so far you guys are too quiet it is nasty outside let's have some fun conversations I hate being stuck in my house with my husband. I don't know about you guys. Um, but it's been getting interesting. Now, I should also let you know I am still long arming. Um, I am, we do what we call the, the ding, drop, and run method. Um, oh, God, I really got rain done coming out here. Anyway, the you will knock on my door. Let me know you're coming. Knock on the door. Um, we'll drop off. The quilt outside then I will pick wave to you you can pick it up yada yada um, when I get it to put on the long arm then I'll send pictures we'll talk about thread color we'll talk about patterns and I'll let you know how it looks by sending you pictures so I always need a cell phone number when you drop off things um, then when it's done which I finished one yesterday what I'm going to do is the same concept. I'll get you your total. I'll send you some finished pictures. Um, you know me well enough. People should know me that I love to show you what your quilt looks like when it's done because I enjoy that so much. Um, but I can't do that right now, unfortunately, um, until we can get healthy in this country and get rid of this bad virus. Um, but I'll have sent you pictures along the way so you'll have a good idea what it looks like. And then you'll know your total. So when it's time for you to come, give me a holler. You're coming over. Then I'll have your quilt in a bag. And I will hand it outside the door to you. And I'm still trying to figure out how I get payment from you. We can do um, credit cards on the phone. We can do... Um, I can invoice you through Square, or I can invoice you through PayPal if that makes it easier or if I just put a little mailbox outside the building for you can put your checks into. Whatever's going to work easiest for us and it's a learning process for all of us so bear with me as I learn all this. But okay now back on to putting this quilt together. So now you're going to take your blocks and I've already, I'll show you. Can, you, can you see all these lovely threads? Hello, Heather! Um, on here, it means I already put this block together wrong once. So it's important that I think that when you go to put this together, reverse this um, video and see where the pattern is and pause it then you can make sure you are putting your blocks in the right direction i had one lady who's already had some issues with that she's been sending me pictures i send her pictures back till we got it figured out so i want to make sure when i do this that my points from the flower this one points towards the center so it's going to go like this hopefully it's not backwards there 
but the point of this point is going to go to this portion. Okay, and then you're going to match up those seams, and I'm going to turn this. I think I have this figured out just right. Uh, yeah, there we go. Now you can see my sewing machine. I love my Janome sewing machine. Anybody ever ask me what machine to buy, I will tell them a Janome every single time. Okay, so now I want to make sure... Yes, I am still facing the right direction. I have a tendency to squirrel. That's half the fun. I talked to the company with my Tula Pink line of fabric that's coming in. Um, it is still on target for June. Hopefully we are out of this mess by June because we're going to have a big Tula party here. Um, that's already getting planned, thanks to my lovely friends Heather and Melissa for helping me out, because we all know how well I squirrel. Um, I, notice I didn't pin anything because I like to be able to shove these pieces right here, these seams, whichever way I need it to go. So then on the front, you'll see that the points match up pretty darn close by being able to do that. Okay, so then I'm going to put this other one on here like that. And no comments today? Hey, Brianna! Or Brianne, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say your name wrong. Welcome to our little party. At least it's not snowing anymore at this point. Sew this again, and then I stop to make sure because we're dealing with bias edges, your fabric will stretch and pull a little bit for you. So, in this case, I want this seam on the bottom to come up towards me so that I have a nice nest right there. Some very nice people taught me that one day, and I haven't pinned since. All right, looks really good. Everything is kind of matchy matchy in there. Hello, sister, how are you? Okay, so now we're going to put these together and and I'm sure, Melissa, correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to post the picture with the little cheat about the four and a half inch center that I am doing. Um, the reason I'm bringing that up is that to match, when you put these three rows together, you have to match up one, two, three, four, five seams. If you do the cheat and you do the four and a half inch square here in the center instead of the four two and a half inch pieces, then you only have to match up one, two, three, and four. So it helps a little bit um, that way. And so I'm just giving you that heads up because I know that that can be a major pain, especially if you're just starting. So we're going to put these three, these three, these two first in. And I am going to do my leader for this one because my sewing machine has a tendency to push skinny stuff down into the middle of it. All right, so I am needle into my leader and start sewing onto my block. And then I stop and I try to make, sh I try to see the easiest way. What I really should have done was press that other block, but I'm gonna I finger pressed, and that's what I'm gonna fly with. Um, doing the seam matching the way I do it doesn't always give you the prettiest backside to your blocks. Um, they're not always nice and flat and beautiful, but personally, that gets hidden inside the quilt with the batting all around it. So I try to make sure that the top looks good 
and I don't worry about the bottom so much. And a lot of old time quilters will tell me that that's wrong, shouldn't do it, but I like to teach new quilters and I want them to enjoy this rather than be stressed out by it. So I am trying to teach them a better way or a simpler way. And then if they really want to get into the history of these quilts and how they're made and all of that good stuff, then they can, they can work on pinning and making everything on the back lay as flat as the front does. My big concern is make sure your seams are good because if you are, have a long armor or if you've long armed yourself, if there's an open seam on a quilt when it goes through the long arm, it gets interesting because if the long arm grabs it, this is my really nifty little thread cutter when I chain piece and I chain piece a lot because of my leader. Um, but you can see that gets you really good crisp edges. Oh, this thing's really struggling focusing. There we go. Um, nice crisp edges and the points there. So that's why I don't pin. I like that look a lot better. So, all right. I use best press before I cut, Jean. Um, it, to me, that makes everything crisper. Then you can see things are not just flippy floppy. They actually have a body to them and the best press helps. So I spray before I cut and then I'll spray when I, like when I did each one of these individual blocks, you look at how bad mine are in the back. When I do each one of these individual block, blocks, then I spray them and get them to press nice and flat. The less that your fabric moves on you when you're cutting, whether it's from the fabric itself or from your ruler or your cutting surface, the better. Everything consistently goes along. Thanks for that great question, Jean. I know that it says Mabel, but her name is Jean. She's, she's known me too long. So now I'm gonna put the third row on. So once again, get my leader in there so you don't hear me yell or cuss at my machine for eating it. And start stitching. And now I'm gonna start matching up all of these beautiful little seams. Um, a friend of mine won't even use Best Press. She uses um, Niagara Starch. I'm sorry, I backed up and started because my needle got stuck in the seam and just pounded the heck out of it. And so that I don't have 50 stitches there, I cut my thread, I backed up beyond it, and I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't get stuck there again by giving it just a little persuasion like that. And because when it gets stuck, it moves your fabric. So instead of staying straight, it ends up like this and then you get wonky seams. But I've, that's been my trick to do it. And now I'm gonna go ahead. Everything, whoop, this one's gonna have to shift. Everything was lining up so good the way it was. And now it has to shift. Oh, I'm still not liking it. See, live television, folks. It's going to get messed up. This is when it's going to happen. Now, here's another little secret. I can see that for some reason, I'm off about an eighth of an inch on this seam. This, Even if I do this, I'm not getting a good seal on it. I'm trying not to make it go out of focus on this. So I am going to take this top piece and I'm just going to give it like an eighth of an eighth of an inch additional seam. Just a little, another little cheap thing that sometimes makes it easier. And I'm not doing it the whole distance because it doesn't need it the whole distance. It only needs it at that seam. So I'm just going to put my needle just a little bit. There we go. And this is something I teach new quilters too because they get so frustrated with having to get that old Jack the Seam Ripper out. And by doing that little bit, I now have a seam that's going to match up nicely. 
I love live stuff. There we go. Oh, back this way. Put my needle back where I was. It doesn't always work on everything that you do. Sometimes you can't do that. But when it's so tiny, I don't panic too much. Because, see, you now all the rest of these right up to the edge all lined up. So that one, I must have shifted my fabric a little bit when I was sewing or it got caught on a seam, something that messed it up. So, oh, that is, there we go. Oh, I'm going to turn the camera a little bit. Hi, everybody again. Now, I don't have this press. I'm just going to pull and try and get it straight and pull it back here. So what do you think, guys? Think you can do this beautiful block? I love the cats. So I will press this hard, is what I, I call it, the press into submission. Um, that way it'll all lay flat where my seams all came together. And you can see, you can't even really tell that I, I can I can show you it where I fix that little bit. I'm going to get really close up here. Hello, Noni. Oh, good idea, Jean. You could have done that with the with these, just sewed on the corners. It's a very good idea, but you'd have to make sure you get to that two and a half inch square because that's what they all are. On the other color that I'm doing, I am going to do these two in instead of doing two two and a half inch pieces I cut them and I'm waiting to see if it works right I cut them two and a half inches wide by four and a half inches long there you go so I'm gonna see if that works too so then there's not as many little squares to deal with also because I know it's hard for new quilters and even us old quilters when you just want to do some stuff Hi, Bri oh, Brienne, I'm glad you love it. Pull out your fabric from your stash because that's what all of this is. is I'm not cutting anything off the bolt for these squares. I am doing them purely out of my scraps. Some of my scraps, I don't know where they came from, but I'm enjoying it. So, if that makes any sense. And by the way, I don't know if you've seen the original picture. These are all going to get set on point um, in our block. And there's 12 blocks that we're doing. And somehow I'm ending up with two quilts because I'm doing them two different versions of it um, because I like to do things that are not always planned. How's that for good? Now, before everybody runs away, I can still ship fabric to you. And you can, well, you can see quilts behind me. Um, those are all are to be long arms. That'll take me about a week and a half maybe two weeks with doing these lives um, but fabric is 850 a yard except for the blues I can ship them to you um, I have also if you can I'll ship you a half yard or two fat quarters of fabric I'm gonna bring this up there maybe we won't stare at my third chin for every for the whole day um, but if you're making the mask let me know I can get you a half yard of fabric I'm not charging you for it um, I want to help out the way I, any way I can help, and that's been my way of doing it at this point. Um, so I'm still long arming. I am still selling fabric, but it has to be shipped. I cannot have anybody come inside the building um, because we need to stop this virus from traveling all over the place. So does everybody having fun? I I'm still planning on doing two blocks a week. Um, I think Wednesday and Sundays or Thursdays and Sundays, I'll post ahead of time when I'm going to do the block. I think that's the best way to do this. And doing it live gives you guys a chance to ask, ask questions like Jean has been doing or um, you can... 
you know what, this, these blocks are all traditional blocks that have been along, around a long time. Let me grab the book. Uh, C&T Publishing, this is the book. I took all 12 blocks from this book. This is the same book that I used to teach my beginning quilting class and part of my advanced quilting class where people learn to piece and the whole bit. Um, fortunately, I'm thinking about how I'm gonna be able to do that for a while. Um, but great, great reference book block. It breaks it down into sizes of blocks. So whether they're 12 and a half, whether they're, um, you wanna do a six inch one. However, this is a great book to get. Um, I can't buy them for the shop for what Amazon sells them for. So I gladly tell you, go to Amazon, go to your favorite bookstore. I can't, I can't bring them in here for less than what they do it. This is, uh, let's see if it'll focus on it. There is C&T Publishing. There's the um, SKU number or UBC num UPC number. Um, and it's the quick and easy block tool. 110 quilt blocks is in five sizes. So this is where they're all coming from. I do have them posted on each one of these videos. And I'm going to continue to do that. But these are just traditional blocks that have been around forever. So anyway... If you guys have any questions, any suggestions, please feel free to contact me. Um, you can reach me on Messenger. You can reach me by cell phone, 715-790-2282. You can reach me by email. It's Angela at Angela's Quilting Studio. Um, I guess if you live out in my neighborhood, you can run out your door and yell. I might hear you then, too. But please pass these videos on to your friends that we're doing live and for free. Um, the more the merrier, and hopefully I make it simple enough that even if it's someone who's just starting, like if you're trying to teach your daughters or your sons with this homeschooling, these are great math lessons and great basic skill lessons to have. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. I am going to go load another quilt. You guys have a great, great day. Um, hopefully the sun comes out and shines for us. But have fun. Bye, everybody.